It was just last year when my therapist took me through a mindfulness moment to focus on recentering myself. Close your eyes, he said. Picture a place, a person, or a thing that makes you feel most at home. Pick any of these things that make you feel like your most authentic self. The perceived darkness quickly turned into a carnival of memories. I saw my granny and granddad sitting next to me interrogating me on the newest forms of art. It was almost like they had never left. I saw my cousin, Macy, perched on a beach chair, book in hand, overlooking the beaches of Sandy Neck. I pictured my brother's Volvo, enhanced by the sound of pop music blaring from the inside speakers. I heard my parents' voices telling me that everything is going to be okay. As I rode the carnival of the past, I started to feel guilty. My fantasies proved that I had it all. But in the moment, those factors were not enough. Growing up, my biggest role models taught me to look ahead in order to discover new opportunities. As a child, how could I resist? There are few hours of the day where I sat alone, confined by the boundaries of my Landau Lane household. I lived on the kid-infested streets of West Parish, along with children who had similar interests as mine, including Pickle. For those of you who are unaware, Pickle is a high-intensity game involving two safe bases to where you run while avoiding the pathway of a tennis ball. If a game was not scheduled, the next question I would visit was maybe what's for dinner or can we watch a movie after? I swear I did all my homework. Until the fall, of my fall semester of my senior year, this is how each day play played out, though I never saw this as an issue. The future was the only thing I truly desired, and lacrosse was all I needed to get to where I wanted to go. College was the next step, and I couldn't have been more ready for a change. Seasons flew by, and my expectations were rapidly altered. The future became so uncertain when my anxiety hit. Trips to the Amherst lacrosse fields were frequently overshadowed by tears and anxious thoughts. Relationships began to slip out of hand until eventually there was nothing more to look forward to. The summer of 2018 came to a close and my last year of Brooks kicked off. Over the summer, it was easy to not dwell on the losses I faced. Instead, I would cope by adding more hours to my week's work. The bill at the end of the week would wish all my worries away, right? The moment I experienced my last first day here at Brooks, I had no job to turn to. I would receive advice from numerous people over the following issue. Why is it that I'm feeling this way? Still, my emotions continued to overshadow the opportunities I had worked so hard for. Illuminated days became intolerable and my emotions got the best of me. In that moment, I faced the most difficult decision of my life thus far. Continue to live out my days in fear and sadness, or bite the bullet and follow the road towards recovery. It was in that moment that I realized each person I had cherished the most, as well as myself, would have chosen the second option for the, advance, uh, for the advancement of my well-being. So I did it. Admittedly, I dreaded the fact that I was signing away my future at my dream schools, but as I learned, that was the opposite of what was to come. There was one day during my semester off that I will never forget. I capitalize on the fact that my future won't be like everyone else's. The image of a roaring, high-spirited campus fell from the tips of my fingers. As a new day came upon me, I would lay in bed, anticipating the amusing media that would come from my friends' accounts. It was difficult to witness my final experiences here at Brooks through a phone screen, but thanks to my friends, it was almost as if I were present. I have more things to thank, not just people. While living here at Brooks, I felt myself missing out on activities I used to excel in as a younger child. Our busy academic and athletic schedules account for little to no time left for ba practicing basic habits. Little did I know these actions would profoundly relieve my anxiety in days to come. As many of you may know, I have fallen in love with art and painting. To tell you the truth, I'm not quite sure where this stemmed from, but the level of relaxation in it influences is beyond my own words. Admittedly, the colors that reflected my life this fall were quite grim. I faced one of the most difficult decisions of my life, which resulted in the separation from the one stable thing in my life, which was art. 
Thankfully, after I identified coping skills I needed to implement in my daily routine to seek improvement, my dad demanded that his voice be heard. Before the death of my grandfather, I was lucky enough to converse with him regarding my stance as an artist. My granddad wasn't, was the individual who told me that being an athlete wasn't always the right pathway to take, despite our family's success in the category. After my granddad's passing, my dad took over his supportive role. Whatever I produced, whether it be abstract lines or intricate illustrations of human figures, his words succeeded in reassuring my unsettled mind. And every day I see aspects of my grandfather and my dad, and I have the both of them to thank for my love of art. There came a point, one that she refuses to admit, when my mother got sick of me. Long, expired conversations would lead to her heading up to her nook, isolating herself in order to finish her latest novel. I idolized her because of this. I remember the fall day where I refused to release myself from the confines of my bed. As I sunk deeper and deeper into the pile of pillows atop my bed, I pressed myself to change. No one would have ever wished this for me, especially not my mom. Consequently, I urged myself to escape my bed. Into the library I went. As a result, I look forward to the moment that I would open up books hardcover. The mysterious, tear-jerking stories focused my attention on everything other than my problematic life, and I couldn't put it down. Thank you, Mom, for pushing me in many unintentional ways. Lastly, I spend the fall of 2018 reflecting on those who have added to the dysfunctional, extroverted personality of mine. One of the most reliable pieces of advice I acquired through months of treatment was the importance of friendships and relationships. As someone who struggles from anxiety, it's important to have a figure that makes you smile and makes you feel worthy during the many dull days ahead. To my cousins who welcomed my childish comments and allowed me to join their, join their impromptu pickup games without hesitation, thank you. To my friends who reached out expressing genuine concern despite their lack of knowledge, you helped me beyond my own understanding. To my aunts and uncles who fostered me into a mature, independent adult despite many reoccurring mishaps, I wouldn't have made it this far without you. And to the Brook School, thank you for understanding the unfortunate mental illnesses that discourage many individuals. Anxiety has proven to be a profound hurdle, and you have helped me overcome it. Lastly, a line from my favorite band, Guster, reads, and I quote, what you call love is just urgency. What you call love is a place you turn into an emergency. Thank you.